Welcome back to the Morning Brief on Channels Television. And time now for the main stories uh, this morning. Starting with this, it's called the Ways and Means, but for some it's simply the printing of Naira notes to fund government projects instead of creating commensurate value for the economy. Well, the Senate is now in search of answers to how 13 trillion Naira Ways and Means was advanced from the Central Bank of Nigeria, obtained under the administration of former President Muhammadu Buhari, was disbursed, as well as how the Anchor Borrowers Program was managed. President of the Senate, Godwill Akpabio, inaugurated inaugurated the ad hoc committee for the probe in Abuja and urged the 17 members to ensure thorough probe of the matter. Ways and Means is a credit facility through which the Apex Bank provides short-term financing to cover government's budget shortfalls. Akwabio charged the committee to spend six weeks in carrying out the exercise. In the nine sentence, the total sum of about 23 point five trillion was brought before the Senate for the Senate to is it concur approve. To approve. or approve the turnout that it wasn't just twenty three point five trillion that in reality we had reached about twenty seven almost twenty eight trillion and then with interest by the time the tenth Senate came we are now saddled with the responsibility of uh, looking at about seven trillion. So when you look at the totality, we are talking about, uh, about a total of about 30 trillion. And the accountant general and the CPN governor have failed to provide the details and see whether they were judiciously utilized and if there is any way that uh, some monies are still uh, remaining, then the Senate will recover it for the benefit of the Nigerian people and for the benefit of this administration. You must leave those two unturned in the pursuit of the truth. Therefore, conduct our inquiries and dig out information that will assist the Senate in making decision on this matter and also making laws for the betterment of our dear country. The information and data you are going to gather for this investigation are very sensitive and must be handled with the utmost care and discretion until you submit your report. We will not see any aspect of the report in the media. Now, the National Assembly brings some twists and turns today as chairman of the Northern Senators Forum, Senator Abdul Ningi, has denied suggesting that the president is implementing two budgets or that President Bola Tinubu is biased against the North. Senator Ningi told journalists in Abuja that he was misquoted by the presidency and that he is ready to carry his cross, even if it means being suspended. I said Bola Hametinubu is implementing two budgets. There was no time. At no time did I say Bola Tinubu was biased against the North. The House of Virgin is there. At no time. Did I say Bola Tinubu is implementing 25 percent, 25 trillion budget? I say we have established very reasonable doubt. About 25 trillion so far has nexus in the budget. That means there is money, and then there is project, and then there is location. Money, project, location. But we are yet to ascertain three trillion, three trillion of that budget. But we establish the three trillion in the budget. We have not established its location and the place. I don't want any northern senator to come here. If it is a cross, I have to carry. I will carry it. 
I'm not afraid of anything. Anything. I believe in one God and I believe power is transient. I'm not scared of any issue like suspension. I've been out of the cell for ages. And people had to force me back. Now, we're not quite done with budget padding claims yet. Another senator, Jimo Ibrahim from Mondo State, who also briefed Senate correspondents, asked the federal government to charge Senator Ningi to court for criminal misinformation and breach of peace in the National Assembly and the country by extension. It is not true that we have two professions. Two, Senator Ningi must be charged to court for conduct likely going to cause breach of peace and criminal misinformation. These two are very important. The charges will be preferred by the Criminal Justice Department of the government and, of course, after thorough investigation. If you have done something that is done good, cover your eyes with shame and then go back and then retrace your step. You cannot come. We are 109 people in the Senate. And you cannot come and, uh, you know, destroy our integrity and reputation. And that will not be acceptable. What you put in the daily is very important. Don't hide under Hausa language. When does Hausa language become uh, a controversy in Nigeria? Well, a very good pose there by Senator Ibrahim. Speaking of which, if you speak Hausa, you might just listen to uh, the, what uh, Senator Ningi said in Hausa and tweet at us exactly what he said. Post, rather, at us. In the meantime, senators from 19 northern states have distanced themselves from claims of budget padding by the senator representing Bauchi Central, Abdul Ningi. In a statement by Senator E.L. Abbas from Adamawa, Ibrahim Bomoy from Yobe, Abdullah Yaradua, and four others, the senators maintain that they're not in agreement with uh, Mr. Ningi's remark, declaring the position of the senators from the 19 northern states and the FCT under the aegis of Northern Senators Forum the senators maintained that Senator Ningi was on his own in the claims he made on the BBC House of Service on the 2024 budget. The statement adds that there was never a time they held a meeting and mandated Senator Ningi to address the press on the said matter. Away from that controversy on budget padding claims, as we look at issues of insecurity, more concerns are trailing the recent abduction of school children and others in Kaduna, Sokoto, and Borono states by bandits. Stating its position in an interview with Channels Television, the Arewa Youth Consultative Forum says the federal government and security agencies have not shown enough commitments to rescuing the kidnapped victims. National President of the Forum, Yerima Shatima, says the lingering insecurity in the north has drastically disrupted farming activities, education, and other socio-economic activities in the region. It's very unfortunate that uh, uh, rather than looking I apologize for that um, hitch in delivering that audio to you. To legal matters now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has told Justice Onyida Mola Ogala of the Lagos High Court, sitting in Ikeja, that chairman of Ibeto Energy Development Company, Chief Cletus Ibeto, has paid back 1.5 billion naira in two tranches in respect of the 4.8 billion naira fraud allegations for which he was charged before the court. Counsel to the EFCC, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Rotimi Jacobs, also told the judge that the defendant paid the money as part of the ongoing plea bargain discussion between the anti-graft agency and the defendants. He adds that the defendants have agreed to pay the balance within the next three months and counsel to the defendants, Adebayo Oshudi, did not deny or confirm these claims. Now, President Bola Tinubu says it is not in his character to blame past administrations for the socio-economic and security challenges in the country as he is committed to taking the right actions to re-engineer the finances and stay on the right path to achieving progress. The president spoke on Monday at the flag off of the agri-mechanization revolution for food security in MENA, the Niger state capital. Addressing other issues, President Tinubu expressed commitment to ending economic sabotage caused by by herders whose cows destroy farmlands while also urging state governors to pay the wage award. We must care 
for people. We must rearrange our farming population, including livestock program. I don't see why Nigeria cannot feed all the pupils in our school with one pint of milk in a day. If our dairy system is well enough, harnessed. Well, speaking of systems that are not quite uh, the best at this time, there may be more trouble for public universities in the country as non-teaching staff of universities comprising the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, SANU, and the non-academic staff of universities, NASU, have declared a seven-day warning strike beginning from Monday, March the 18th. President of SANU, Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim, told a news conference in Abuja that a joint action committee of the two unions resolved after their meeting in Nondo State that the non-teaching staff should proceed on a warning strike to protest the non-payment of withheld four-month salaries of members. And outside our shores, violence in the capital, Port-au-Prince, ramped up once again over the weekend as heavily armed gangs attacked the National Palace and set part of the Interior Ministry on fire with petrol bombs. This follows a sustained attack on the International Airport, which remains closed to all flights, including the one carrying Prime Minister Ariel Henry. The Prime Minister tried to fly back to Haiti from the United States last week, but his plane was refused permission to land. He was then turned away from the the neighboring Dominican Republic also. Mr. Henry is now stuck in Puerto Rico, unable to set foot in the nation he ostensibly leads. Talk about paradoxes. Now, in the sports scene, following a week of celebrating women's event, Nigeria's female athletes have received a morale booster as they have added six more gold in women's 55 kg and 59 kg event that just got, got concluded at the 13th Africa Games in Ghana. Hadijat Olarewoye won gold in clean jerk, snatch, and overall in the 55 kg. It was the same for Rafia Tsulawal in her own event. Earlier on, Edith Young Umofia raised the bar when he won the highest number of single medals in weightlifting, clinching three gold in the men's weightlifting 67 kg. Team Nigeria also carted away medals in other events, two silver in the men's freestyle 57 kg and 60 kg, and bronze in chess events.